Hey there, NCC Unplugged fans! So, due to the summer schedule and vacations coming up, we've decided to switch things up a bit. Starting now, we'll be bringing you our episodes on a bi-weekly basis. That means you'll get today's episode as usual, and then the next one will be airing on July 24th. But don't worry. Even though we're spreading out our episodes a bit more, we're still going to be delivering top-notch content and engaging discussions every step of the way please remember to give us a like and five-star review. Doing so helps NCC Unplugged reach more people. And now for today's episode. We all do have a story to share and we can we can talk about the transformation that God's done in our hearts, whether we've known him since we were a child or whether yeah. you, know, you come to faith in him as an adult. So yeah. you don't need to wait to have this perfect 30 minute of you know, family devotion time on your mm. living room couch. Make small deposits every day in the life of your child through, he has been breaking down um, fear and anxiety in my life. Um, I had a health issue 10 years ago that really spiraled into a lot of health anxiety that then spiraled into a lot of just generalized anxiety in my life. This is NCC Unplugged. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. I always feel like I forget to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Terpstra, preaching minister at Norwin Christian Church, and this is a podcast based out of NCC, and uh, we are excited to be joined with Allison Murray this morning. Hi, Jeff. Allison Murray is our director of children's ministry here at NCC, and something that I have not done yet on this podcast is kind of just interview her about herself. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm excited. Yeah. So you may have heard other interviews and just kind of getting to know other church members. I hope you've been encouraged as I have been. Just, I love hearing how God works in other people's lives, how God uh, has brought them to the point where they are now, and just in a way to get to know other people that attend our church. And Allison, more than just attend, she's on staff. Uh, she's been on staff, well... Whoa, I'll let you tell that story Okay. Uh, for how many years you've been here. But uh, let's start at the beginning. Did you grow up in Pennsylvania? I did. I have not been far from this area except for my college years and right past there. I grew up um, in Penn Township. And so I graduated from Penn Trafford High School. So I've been kind of in the area. It, it is. Yeah. So I've been in that area for a long time. Um went to church in the surrounding area for a very long time. Um, and so I am glad to be back home. I went um, away to college, to Grove City College for four years and then taught in Butler for three years. Cool. So that was like the furthest I've mm -hmm. ever been. And then came back here and I'm, I consider this area yeah. home. And uh, you're telling me earlier, almost in tears, you just missed your brother so much. I had, yes. That you had to come I back. I had to come back for And Matt. he's right off the screen. That's why I'm <laughs> saying that right now. He's over in the corner. Um, so you uh, talk about like early childhood, family, all that stuff. Uh, did you grow up in the church? Sure. You guys were always part of the church? We were. Um, I have friends now that, you know, we say we met in the church nursery mm -hmm. because that the church has always been part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are very strong Christians and raised Matt and I um, to know Jesus from a young age. So I was baptized at age eight. And as I think back through my story, um, there have been times where eight, I think when I was a teenager, I questioned like, Mm. Is it possible that I knew enough at age eight to come to a saving knowledge mm -hmm. and faith of, in Jesus? And, you know, almost the question of, did my baptism count kind of thing? Um, but now all these years later, as I look back, I can say that, that yes, I did at, at what an eight-year-old can have an understanding of, you know, salvation in Jesus. Um and so, it, of course, it counted, but I believe that God mm -hmm. gives us grace for where we are, you know, at mm -hmm. that point in time when mm -hmm. we come to faith in Him. And then as we grow, obviously, we're going to mature, and that's part of that whole sanctification process. But um, that was probably, for a long time, I felt like I didn't have um, a testimony because I have yeah. known Jesus for my whole life. And 
thankfully, um, just because of growth that I've done in the last few years, I'm beginning to see that we don't all have to have that like rags to riches story or that like he picked me up from, you know, the pit, Mm -hmm. um, that we all do have a story to share and we can we can talk about the transformation that God's done in our hearts, whether we've known him since we were a child or whether, yeah. you know, you come to faith in him as an adult. So yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Just reflect on my story too. Like we all want this, like I was, you know, hardcore drug addict, or whatever, and God completely transformed my life. But sometimes we we need to be reminded of God working in other ways, in small ways, and that is transforming us. Like, even though our stories aren't like that, we were still lost in our sins mm-hmm. and we were still depraved even more than we think. And so, yeah. Okay. For sure. Well, before I keep going on that, this is about you. So, <laughs> uh, so what, um, Okay, so that was growing up a little bit. You went off to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you go to college for? I went to college for elementary and early childhood education. Um, and after that, I taught as a first grade teacher for mm-hmm. six years in the public school system, three years in the Butler Area School District. And then when I moved back in this area, I taught at West Hemfield Elementary, also first grade for first grade. three years. What, what was that like? Did you enjoy it? Were they little rugrats? What, what <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it at yeah. the time that I did it. And mm. people have asked me since then, like, well, when are you going back? Or mm. Are you going back? And, and at this point, the answer is I, I don't care to go back. Mm-hmm. But for that point in time in my life, it was absolutely the thing that I loved doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm so thankful that I had those interactions with those children and those families Um, But it's changed a lot since I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the thing that I loved most was being able to see what my particular students needed and then kind of construct an education for them. And now you really have to like use the teacher's manual and follow the Mm -hmm. curriculum. There's a little bit less autonomy than there was when I Mm -hmm. first started. Um, And so I don't know that I would enjoy going back now because the, the situation is different. Um, So, but it was, it was great when I did it. I really, I really love the connections with those kids and their parents. And during that time you got married. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. So my husband, Jim, and I have been married for 19 years. We just celebrated our 19th anniversary on June 4th. Um, And so in, in kind of time with getting together with Jim, it's almost like the same timeline as I started attending here at Norwin. So I've been at Norwin like one more year than I've been married. So this is my 20th year here as a member of Norwin Christian Church. So he was he, say that again. He was here first. He was. Uh, he was att- attending mm-hmm. Norman first. Uh, what was that meeting like? Oh. Who, who arranged this? So, yes. So, my brother Matt knew Jim from a Bible study that they had been attending together. And um, I hadn't been dating anyone in a while. And he was like, oh, we should meet. You should go and, and, and meet Jim Murray. And so the first Sunday that I came here um, as a guest to meet him, there was a funny story. If you watched, remember a couple of years ago, we did those videos with our, our spouses. Yeah, yeah. So you can go back and watch that and hear the whole thing. But that Sunday morning, there was another girl that was kind of like hanging nearby him. And we assumed that must have been his girlfriend. And so I kind of left feeling a little dejected, but found out later that no, she was just a girl that was maybe interested in him, but they were not dating. So our first in our first meeting was a little bit strange, but um, we quickly became friends. And then he asked me out on a date, yeah. and the rest is history. Church is a great place to meet others, future spouses it potentially is, for sure. So if you need anybody, let us know. <laughs> um, okay, so you're a teacher. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. You're mm-hmm. working here at NCC. So tell us a little bit about that. You were stay at home mom for a while. Like, mm-hmm. just walk us through that sure. story a little bit. Okay. So when we had our daughter Lily, who is going to be turning 17 this fall in September, um, when we had her, I resigned my position at West Hemfield because Jim and I both knew that I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And, mm-hmm. and we were blessed to be able to do that. And so, um, I stayed at home with Lily and then our son Cooper, who just turned 14, um, for 
quite a number of years. In those years, I did things like teach private piano lessons in my living room. Mm. Um, I did some private tutoring at the library because I have my reading specialist degree. And so I did a lot of reading tutoring for a couple of summers. So I was doing some kind of like side jobs, but I was primarily a stay-at-home mom for all of those mm. years. Um, I've been homeschooling since Lily began kindergarten. So that's been a big part of, of what I've done. But um, Maureen Gratton, took me under her wing as a volunteer yeah. many years ago. She was the um, Christian education director. And she just one year said, how would you like to co-direct VBS with me? And this is at this point over a decade ago. I, it's probably been like maybe 12 years at this point or something like that. And I started co-directing Vacation Bible School with Maureen which gradually just led to Maureen and I working in tandem a lot. She on staff, me as a volunteer. And I was really just starting to um, come to love the children's ministries here mm -hmm. and understand what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and so when it came a point in time where she knew she was headed towards retirement, not quite ready yet, um, the elders asked me to come on board cool. as an assistant. Mm -hmm. And so since 2019, I've been on staff starting in that assistant role. Mm -hmm. And then when Maureen retired, we kind of reworked her position a little bit. And um, it's morphed into the director of children's ministries position that I have now that I have had since um, February of 2021. Cool. So talk about how you saw God working in all of that from bringing you to where you were as a teacher to where you are now and, mm -hmm. and all that. The thing that I notice most and that, that excites me just about how God works in our lives mm -hmm. is the fact that when I was back um, as a student at Grove City College, I envisioned teaching being the thing I would do until the age of retirement mm. because I always had this plan in my mind, oh, being a teacher fits so well with your children's schedules. I can be off with them in the summer. Yeah. I can be off on holidays, you know? So I always had this, this short-term vision of, you know, I will stay home for a few years with young children. And then when they go off to school, I'll go back. Mm -hmm. And so as a college student, ministry was not on my horizon at all. It was all about teaching in the public school for, you know, all of that time. And then God changed those plans once Jim and I had children. And so the thing that I love most is to look back and say, he knew I was going to be in children's ministry someday, mm -hmm. but he chose to prepare me as a teacher first. Yeah and not prepare me in a ministry education. But man, when I look back on the things that I learned, I'm applying those things every day mm -hmm. in my role here. Yeah. And and thankfully with everyone that I work with and just personal study, I feel like I've caught up on the ministry side of things since I oh, don't yeah. have that education behind me. Mm -hmm. But I love all of the things that I learned about um, child psychology, things that I know about interacting with families, mm -hmm. things that I know about how a child best learns. I'm applying those things in my role here all the time. Yeah. So how do you think God has been working in your heart most recently? What are some things you've been hearing from him? Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that has been changing in me over the past even six months is um he has been breaking down um, fear and anxiety in my life. Um, I had a health issue 10 years ago that really spiraled into a lot of health anxiety that then spiraled into a lot of just generalized anxiety in my life. And, um, you know, I begged and pleaded with him for 10 years to take that away. And he said, no, not yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so there was a lot of clinging to him that I had to do a lot of scripture memory and things that I had to, you know, rely on, on the worst days, just saying the 23rd Psalm over and over again was something wow. that I remember doing like on the worst days. Um, but really gradually I, I was experiencing him just healing my heart really and, and making me realize that I can't be in control of everything. And when I finally was able to realize that and truly put my trust and my reliance in him, then I started realizing that I could let go of a lot of that fear 
because we really don't have control over mm -hmm. our lives. But I trust the one who does have control. Mm -hmm. And so even in this last six months, I have truly seen um, just so many of just like the shackles of that anxiety being broken wide open. Mm -hmm. And when I share this story, in some ways it makes me a little bit sad for someone who's still sitting in that because yeah. for 10 years, he didn't take it away. Mm -hmm. And so if, if somebody's listening today and is saying, well, that's not fair. Why Allison? Why not me? I was in your shoes mm -hmm. because there was a long time that I watched other people be released from, from these fears and these worries. But what brought me to where I am today is just relying solely on him. Even when I thought that there may be a time that this side of heaven, I would never experience, you know, relief from those, from those worries. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that's what finally allowed me to get to this place is just full 100% reliance on him and knowing that I can't rely on myself. Wow. So what, what does that look like for someone that's in it? Like what, what's the encouragement a first step for someone that that's in the depths of that anxious spiral. Tell a friend. Mm. Um, I didn't tell enough people. Mm -hmm. And as I look back on the last 10 years, I realized that maybe healing could have come sooner if I would have been more open. Mm -hmm. um, and I've become very much an advocate for like good mental health treatment. And I didn't seek it out for myself. Yeah. And so I, I would say tell a friend first and then even though it's going to be hard, listen to their guidance mm -hmm. because when they say maybe you need to go seek, seek counseling or maybe you need to go see your doctor, um, I should have done those things and I didn't. Yeah. And, and so um, I've made Jim since promise me that if I ever spiral into that again, that that's the first thing we will do is seek counseling because I really do believe that it has a place. Even if you're in a good place, counseling can have a place in mm -hmm. all of our lives. Yeah. But it is something that I think maybe I was embarrassed to admit. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't seek the proper channels that I should have. Yeah. Thanks for sharing about that and being vulnerable. I know you're not the only one dealing with that, so it's important mm -hmm. we talk about it. Um, and as a church, you know, we know some counseling organizations. We're more than happy to get people into that place where they can get help and process some of those mm -hmm. those things. So, um, being in your position as director of children's ministry, what is some encouragement or some help that you'd give to parents that are just in a busy season of life, you know, we're right now as we're recording this, we're in the midst of summer. You and your schedule of children's ministry is busy. Parents have, you know, soccer, whatever it is that they're involved in. What would you, what piece of advice or encouragement would you give to parents that are, that are in that season right now? Sure. Well, you know that anytime I get to talk about family discipleship, I'm always going to turn to Deuteronomy yeah. 6. And so the advice that I give is that when Deuteronomy 6 talks about talking about the things of God, when you lie down, when you get up, as you're at home, when you walk along the way, you don't need to wait to have this perfect 30 minute of you know family devotion time on your mm. living room couch make small deposits every day in the life of your child through the way you help them through their hard times, through the way you celebrate the good times, mm -hmm. through bringing them here to church on Sunday, discussing on the ride home what they learned. Mm -hmm. All of those little things can make an eternal impact. Yeah. So start small, keep at it, and realize that over the course of your child's life, you really are making Mm -hmm. big deposits, they might just not be all just at once. Like little at, at the time. Mm -hmm. So give us an example from your life. What What is something that you guys did? And this is unique to your family. This, you're, this isn't a prescription for everybody. What is something that you found worked in the rhythm of your, your family? Mm -hmm. um, talking about important things around the dinner table. Mm. We are not always able to have dinner together, but on the nights that we can, we've already always placed a priority just on having really open discussion. Mm -hmm. And so by starting it there at a place that we were already spending time together, then that created a culture in our home where everyone has been very free to communicate with one another. So then mm. that spirals into, 
we can have discussions in the car or we can have discussions out at an event or things like that. As questions come up, the kids are free to just ask them because they know that we have created a culture where we're not afraid of hard questions. And so we just want to be really open. And mm -hmm. so that was something we started really young is just having good discussion at dinner so that they knew they could be safe to have discussion with us anywhere. Yeah. Cool. Well, anything else for our listeners today? Um, I think just as, as families, as we look, I think as you look at the calendar here at Northern Christian Church, you can tell that we do place a priority on children mm -hmm. learning the things of God and spending time and connecting in community with one another. Mm -hmm. So I would say families look for those opportunities and get involved when you can. Mm -hmm. And then also just know that we're here. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of those things that, um, sometimes in my role, because it can tend to be a little min administrative at points. I think sometimes people don't realize that I would love to sit down and have a conversation with you or with your yeah. children. And so please feel free to reach out to me at any point. And I would love to walk along, you know, the life of, of your family and help you find ways to help your children connect more with Jesus. Uh, one last question for you before we wrap up. What is one act of kindness that someone did for you that you will never forget? That is a pretty easy one. When we had Lily, um, I was in mops at the time and the women in mops plus in just like other areas of my life um, made so many meals for us. Mm. And... Um, I laugh thinking about it though, because at one point we had like seven versions of lasagna, like, or some <laughs> Italian meal. Thankfully now with like those online meal trains, people can say what they're bringing yeah. and it helps not have a lot of repeats. But I was so grateful for those seven lasagnas cool. because it showed um, the love of my of my people, mm -hmm. of, of my community. And it helped in a really practical way right. when Jim and I were just exhausted. And so that kindness really stuck with me. And now that's something I try to make sure that I do when people are either having new babies or in a time of need, if I can provide a meal mm -hmm. for them, um, I know what an impact that makes. And I don't know if I would do it as often if somebody else hadn't done it for me first. So yeah. that really stuck with me. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for uh, opening up a little bit today and letting us ask you some questions. And um, most of you listening probably already know Allison Murray, but now you know her background a little bit and more about her. So she's always very open for questions and conversations. So like she said, feel free to always stop her and, and ask. But the, Allison, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 845 and 1030 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 